Kennel 2 investigates an Atlanta-based sperm bank. It admits it did not verify the application of one of its so-called premier donors who fathered dozens of children. Well, now the parents of some of those children showing symptoms of men mental illness want Georgia courts to take another look in an effort to regulate the industry and also provide health care for those children. Channel 2's investigative reporter, Nicole Carr, is live in Midtown. That's where the journey started for some of these families, near, nearly, for nearly 40 families. Nicole. Right. Jovita, they're spread across the globe but share one thing in common, donor number 9623. And when this Atlanta-based sperm bank accidentally revealed the donor's identity through an email, his troubling past became Google searchable. Now signs of possible schizophrenia began to make sense for very young families. The rage started early, collapsing on the floor in kindergarten, not responding to anyone, screaming fits in first grade with signs of bipolar disorder, disappearing into the woods in third grade. And then we found on his phone that he was searching how to kill myself and how to kill my perfect stepbrother. But it wouldn't be until March of 2017 that Wendy Norman would discover her 15-year-old's behavioral and mental issues likely tied back to his birth and sperm donor number 9623. For me, I'm scared. How do I help my son? He's beyond scared. Norman is one of nearly 40 mothers across the United States, Canada, and UK who turned to Atlanta-based Zytex for the ideal sperm donor. A tall, athletic Athens man, a 160 IQ with a PhD. Only problem, none of it was true. They found out accidentally because Zytex CC'd him on an email to one of them. That he had suffered from disabling schizophrenia, and these parents never would have chosen him as a sperm donor. My initial understanding is that there was a comment made on a YouTube video about something that someone read into that and believed that to be an admission of some sort of disorder. I don't read it that way at all, but that's, that's how these initial parents took it. A Georgia teen's 2017 Google search to find his father would rattle Norman's household. I really, really wanted it to not be true. In comes this San Francisco-based legal team. Over the years, civil cases have been settled. Basically, Zytex said, well, you know, we can believe what the people say when they tell us and we don't have to check. Now cases like Norman's add a new chapter to the story. It's become even worse. The children are growing up and the, they are beginning to manifest uh, signs and symptoms of mental illness. A quick scroll through court records show an uphill fight in the Peach State. We had cases everywhere uh, and they weren't dismissed. Only the Georgia cases were dismissed. These are the first cases that uh, have an opportunity to make precedent that can protect families. Georgia doesn't recognize wrongful birth, the only case law it has to rely on in this unprecedented nature of a complaint. It involves a doctor's negligence to identify hereditary disorders during pregnancy. Contrary to Hirsch's firm, the donor's attorney believes the courts have repeatedly looked at this the right way. And when you have a wrongful birth claim, you're essentially saying, if someone had done their job, I would not have had this baby, I would have had this baby, and this baby would have been better. And the law doesn't allow that. In part of a statement from Zytex's attorney, the defendants say the sperm bank never misled anyone, warning potential purchasers the medical and social history was provided by the donor and cannot be verified for accuracy. Hirsch and Newdorf want Zytex to notify donor recipients and pay for mental health care if necessary. Wendy Norman wants a crystal ball. And now it's so limbo. Um, he's doing great. But what's coming? And when? Nicole, the mother you talked to was actually familiar with the sperm bank before this huge discovery. She had a great experience the first time. Right. Her son, who has shown these signs of mental illness, that's actually her um, second pregnancy from Zytex. She had requested that original donor, but was told that Zytex retires the donors after 10 births. We now know through this case that's not true because he fathered it um, almost 40 kids, nearly 40 kids. And I did meet this child, by the way, Joe Vita. He was very mature. He's been through a lot of therapy, and he was open to sharing his story off camera. We're live in Midtown, Nicole Carr, Channel 2 Action News. These families put so much trust into these companies, Nicole. Thank you.